the Mets. This was a pitcher's duel through most of this game between uh, Bill Lasky and Ed Lynch. Tied at two after nine innings. The Giants came up with six runs on six hits off of West Gardner in the tenth. Two of those runs coming on a Chris Brown homer. The Giants defeating the Mets in ten by the score of eight to two. Pick it up in the third inning. Jose Uribe on third base and Bill Lasky. And the suicide is on. Urebi uh, comes in to score. Lasky is tagged out, and the Giants lead by the score of one to nothing. Mets took the lead in the fourth inning, though. Keith Hernandez on first. George Foster takes his last two pitch deep to center field. Dan Gladden going back and clears the wall for his fifth homer. First of the year off Lasky, and the Mets lead two to one. Giants even it in the seventh. Chili Davis hammering uh, this Ed Lynch pitch to center field. This one is gone as well, and we're tied at two apiece. Went to extra innings, top of the 10th, Giants explode. They have the bases loaded. Pinch hitter Gary Reyes wraps a base hit through the right side off of West Gardner. Alex Trevino and Jose Uribe come in to score, and the Giants out on top, 4-2. to two. Wasn't over. Giants kept going. Chili Davis pokes a hit to left, and around third comes Jeff Leonard. The relay comes uh, in from Rafael Santana, but it is too late, and the Giants are coming up with those six runs. They go on to beat the Mets by the score of 8-2. to two. Mark Davis uh, getting that victory. He is now 2-1 in the season. Wes Gardner taking the loss. He is 0-1. Elsewhere in Montreal, the Padres came up with five runs in the ninth inning to break open a one-run ball game and give the Padres an 8-2 to two win over the Montreal Expos. Dave Javecki getting the win. He had a, tossing a one-hitter over seven and third innings. So he, uh, he's hit taking a loss. And Deep Gossage getting his 10th save of the season. Meanwhile, in Atlanta, the Braves held off Cubs rally by the score of 4-3. to three. Rick Mailer with a three-run double in that game, helping his own cause, obviously. Becomes the first eight-game winner in the majors this year. Mailer now 8-2 and two on the season. Dennis Eckersley takes the loss. He is 4-3. and three. Drew Suter to save his seventh of the season. Will you? Rookie Tom Browning has been impressive at times and not so impressive at others. And on Saturday night at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, we saw the more impressive side of Tom Browning. He showed his good stuff to the Buckos. We'll pick it up top of the fourth. Reds lead 1-0 against Mike Balecki, and there's Pete Rose with a two-bagger to right center field, which will score Ronnie Oster and Eddie Miller, puts the Reds up top 3-0 as Rose continues to chase Ty Cobb. After Dave Parker was intentionally walked, catcher Allen nicely singles to right. George Hendricks bobbles the ball, and Rose never stopped. He scores from second, four is Zippo in favor of the Reds. Sixth inning, two outs, nobody on. Here's Dave Parker as he loses one over the right field wall. 5 nothing now in favor of the Reds as Parker homers against his former mates. Red starter Tom Browning fired a five-hit shutout, got help on plays like this. After Marvell Wynn had singled, George Hendrick attempts to score from second. The throw by Gary Reedus to Allen nicely on target. Hendrick is out, and the Reds complete a shutout victory. Browning getting his fourth victory of the year. Five-hitter, it's Cincinnati, eight-zip over the Pirates. Balecki loses for the second time. He has won one so far this year. Meanwhile, at the vet in Philly, the Phils and the Dodgers, and Von Hayes is certainly on a tear. He has a 13-game hitting streak. He's hit safely in 19 of his last 20 games. His two-run homer in the sixth off reliever Tom Niedenfuhr was the difference in this game as the Phils handed the Dodgers their fourth straight loss. The final was a 7-5 to five by Anderson getting the win, Niedenfuhr taking the loss, and Carmen getting his first save of the season. And one other game in the National League on Saturday night in Houston, the Cards and the Houston Astros. Uh, Houston uh, going on to uh, victory in this game behind Nolan Ryan. Well, that's so much for the National League. We'll take a look at the junior circuit next, including the Yankees, who continue to be red hot. They've won six straight, and they spoiled Reggie Jackson's 39th birthday. Back in just a minute. Celebrate. The Yankees got a two-run single from Ricky Henderson, a two-run double from Willie Randolph. The Yanks rolling to their sixth straight win as they beat the Angels. The final was 6-1. to one. Yankees scoring first in this game. Ricky Henderson with a base hit up the middle. This one coming with the bases loaded off of Tommy John, Ken Griffey, and Dale Barra coming to score. And the Yanks out on top quickly, 2-0. To they picked up a couple more runs. Willie Randolph with a shot down the right field line. That brings in Don Baylor and Reggie Jackson bobbling the ball in right field. And uh, that allows Butch Weiniger to beat the throw home. So the Yanks out on top, 5-1. to one. Joe Cowley went six in the third inning for the Yanks here. He strikes out six both fields, struck out six, gave up only six hits. And then watch Cowley again uh, with Gary Pettis on first. He catches Pettis winning. The pickoff is successful. Mattingly applying the tag and the Yanks. 
go on to beat the Angels again in a sixth straight win. The final was 6-1. to one. Joe Kelly getting the victory. Tommy John taking the loss. And Brian Fisher getting his first save of the season. Lou? Well, as Gail told you, Rick Mailer is already the winningest pitcher in Major League Baseball with eight wins. Dan Petrie now is the winningest pitcher in the American League. He has now won his seventh game as he pitched the Tigers to a win over the Oakland A's. Got plenty of hitting support, and the Tigers built up a big 8-1 lead, then held on for a 9-6 victory. Top of the first no-score, Steve McCaddy throws a home run ball to Alan Trammell. That's number five of the year, and just off the foul pole. Detroit leads it one nothing. Still in the first with two on and one out, Darrell Evans takes this to right center field, a three-run shot, his second in as many days, and the Tigers lead by four runs. Third inning is one we'll pick it up again, 6-1 Detroit, Tom Tillman on to relieve McCaddy. Here's Tom Brookins with a shot to right field. Both Darrell Evans and Larry Herndon will score. Dusty Baker at first base may, uh, makes the good cutoff, and they've got Brookins in a rundown. Go over to second base, and they eventually will tack out Brookins, but two-run score, and the Tigers now lead 8-1. Dave Kingman came back with a home run for Oakland. They tried to make it close, got only as close as three runs, and Detroit wins it 9-6. to six. Petrie now 7-2, and two. McCaddy 2 up and 2 down. Elsewhere around the American League, Toronto Blue Jays behind Jim Clancy, who scattered nine hits with some relief help from Acker, beat Minnesota 3-1 was the final score there in favor of the Blue Jays, and the Kansas City Royals had their winning streak snapped at six in a row, the Brewers beating them behind Moose Haas. Final score there was 7-2, to two. Danny Jackson taking the seat. Uh, the defeat, his record now two up and two down. Meanwhile, in Cleveland, the Indians finally putting an end to their five-game losing streak. The combination of Neil Heaton and Tom Waddell holding the Red Sox to just four hits. Cleveland over Boston. The final was four to one. Tribe striking first in this game. Bottom of the first, Brett Butler leads off with a double to left. Jim Rice uh, in the corner there has a little problem picking the ball up. So Butler moved over on a ground out, later scored on a sack fly. Two on, no outs in the Boston third inning. Wade Boggs sends a sinking liner into left center. Watch Brett Butler. He comes up with a super diving catch. But uh, after that, they walk Evans, and Neil Heaton uh, issues another walk here to Bill Buckner. That's forced in Marty Barrett, and the Red Sox pick up a run. We're tied at one apiece. Then Heaton finally settled down, getting Rice on a soft liner, and here fanning Tony Armas to escape what really could have been a potentially big inning. Bottom of the sixth now, two on and two outs. Benny Ayala from the minor singles to right center. Andre Thornton coming in from, from second base, and uh, Cleveland takes the lead 2-1, to one, and they just uh, move from there. Bottom of the eighth now, Pat Tabler facing Mark Clear, greets him with a single to left. That brings in Julio Franco, one of the two insurance runs that Cleveland got here as they beat the Red Sox by the score of 4-1. to one. Neil Keaton coming up with the victory. He is now 3-3 three and three on the season. Bruce Hurst taking the loss. He is 1-4, and four, and Tom Waddell getting his seventh save of the season. A couple of other games in the American League on Saturday night. Texas Rangers and the Chicago White Sox uh, in Chicago. The second game for uh, Rangers new manager Bobby Valentine. And the Baltimore Orioles and the Seattle Mariners uh, in Seattle. The Mariners coming up with three runs in the first inning in this game. Two of them on Ken Phelps' third home run of the season. 